In this video, it's a complement to the previous video that I've recently made of a stress field near a plate with a hole. And this is part of a homework assignment where I ask students to plot the plate with a hole stress distribution and the crack field stress distribution. And I reference some theory videos that, uh, where I go and develop the equations. And from that theory video here, I have the equations uh, that we ended up with at the end of the uh, Westergaard solution play with the whole video and that's this uh, video here. So I've just pulled these equations out. Now one of the things I think is a little bit confusing about this assignment is that the plate with a hole coordinate system and the plate with a crack coordinate system where we develop all these equations are completely different coordinate systems. To be very careful about that and interpret our plots accordingly. The plate with a hole coordinate system was turned 90 degrees so that the stress was applied in the horizontal direction and the coordinate system started at the center of the hole. Here, with the crack tip stress fields, we're applying a stress in a vertical direction and in fact this was actually for a biaxial stress field but the stress field in the vertical direction is unchanged. And the coordinate system is such that theta is equal to zero will correspond to the stress that we want in the vertical direction of sigma y. So what we want here, change colors, we want to use this equation. We want to use that equation with theta is equal to zero. The other thing to point out is that the coordinate system for this problem starts at the tip of the crack as opposed to the center of the hole which we had in the previous problem. Well, we've gone through and we've done everything make all this work out. So if we take theta is equal to zero, then what we have is sigma y is equal to k1 square root of 2 pi r cosine of zero, which is one, times one plus zero. So the stress in the y direction is going to be the formula k1 over the square root of 2 pi r. Now at the end of the previous video that I had mentioned, we figured out uh, what k1 was equal to. k1 is the strength of the singularity. k1 terms the crack size parameter is equal to the far field stress sigma times the square root of pi a, where a is the half crack length. All right, so we're going to use these two equations. We combine them together. I guess we can write it down here. Sigma y is equal to the far field stress sigma times the square root of pi over a divided by square root of 2 pi r, uh, which we can reduce down to uh, a over r divided by 2 under the square root. So this is the equation that we're going to put into Excel. And we're going to use the value of a far field stress equal to 1. All right, so let me go to my Excel file and bring it over. This was the plate with the hole solution. I've done this ahead of time, so let's go ahead and do it live. And in the plate with a hole, here is the the edge of the hole is right at one unit and it drops down very steeply to our far field stress value of one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this spreadsheet because I have most of the work done. And I'm going to make a new spreadsheet for that. All right, so we have our A, which is our crack size. We're going to use an A of one unit. Uh, we need the A over R, and our formula is going to change. We'll get rid of this formula, go back here, and we're going to copy this formula. Paste it into here. 
So I'm going to have for my stress, I can call that sigma y now if I want. Sigma, which is one unit, then I'm going to have, I don't have any of this stuff anymore, square root of a over r, take that, divide by 2, and then take that to the 0.5 power. Okay, so that's kind of weird. We have a value of 0.71. Keep in mind, we haven't shifted our coordinate system yet, and this is very important. So let's uh, insert a row here instead of R. What this is, this is the uh, distance from plate center. What we really want is the distance from the crack tip. Now, since our crack size is 1, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this distance and we're going to subtract our crack uh, half length. And instead of uh, this, I am going to have to change this to F. changes to A over this new R instead of F, it's going to be G. All right, now that creates an infinite stress, so let's keep that in mind. Paste this all down in here. Now, plotting this infinite stress as uh, 1. So we really need to get rid of this first bit right here. Okay, so this is one unit here. I'm going to save this file. And so you see how much more steeply I truncated this to 25. Um, it goes to infinity. So see how much more steeply this stress distribution is compared to the plate with the whole stress distribution. Let me manipulate these plots a little bit. Maybe we can get these both on the same scale. Okay, so I took my plate with the whole values and I superimposed them onto the values of the uh, plate with a crack. And I have this uh, distribution. Now, one of the things you may notice about this solution, if you look at the uh, blue line, which is the crack solution as compared to the orange line, which is the plate with a hole solution, the uh, blue line does not go to the far field stress value. And there's a reason for that. Uh, remember, uh, and this is an important um, thing to, to remember, the solutions for the plate with the hole uh, excuse me, the solutions for the plate with a crack, we're restricting ourselves to the near crack tip stress field. All right, so by moving this out to multiple values, um, even sizable fractions of the crack size, taking this R value too big, uh, we are uh, beyond the applicability of the formula that we have developed based on this expression here. So really this uh, blue line needs to be probably chopped off um, maybe somewhere around here. But the point is you have a, a very high and steep gradient for the stress in this direction. You still have a pretty steep gradient for the plate with a hole, but it is finite. The plate with a crack, as you get around in here, just isn't uh, applicable because um, we're not picking up the far field solution. All right, so that's kind of what I wanted for that particular homework assignment.